Hello fellow gamers from Handkiter video for demos. This video will also be long because these are all mechanics which belong to specific builds so there's a lot of details to explain and show. Now let's start. Now Revenant uses Herald, a support healer build for hand kiting. Your base regeneration and anything you need to survive comes essentially from your Herald build itself. So as for your runes and item stats, it all depends on your playstyle. These are the stats and runes you can choose from. There's insane amount of combinations you can come up with all these, so I want you to give an idea to how to choose your combination as a new Herald Kiter. And after days of research and asking our experienced hand kiters in the guild, they all concentrated on three key points you should consider while choosing your combination. First of all, the only thing that's important is to keep your toughness lower than your tank. Other than that, any of these build and rune combinations will work. I was warned about if hand kiter wants to pug, they might need really low amount of toughness, because pugs usually do not have tanks with big amount of toughness, so take this into consideration. Secondly, prioritize vitality over toughness. For more tankiness and survivability, stats with vitality is recommended because getting more toughness is an issue since you have to have lower amount of toughness than your tank. For example, getting full minstrel and cleric with dolyak runes might be overdoing it because of huge amount of toughness that build has. And thirdly, among these builds, Harrier could be the last you will want to choose because power is not the best stat that will benefit your survivability. Among these builds, Magi could be good to learn how to really survive as a hand kiter because you won't have toughness on this build. If you learn how to survive with Magi, any other stats will feel easier later on. For food, anything with vitality, concentration, food that will decrease the damage taken will do good. All beside the build stuff, on normal demos, Soul will put a banner that will teleport to you as you move. That banner will also heal you. On CM mode, Herald is still preferred because solid amount of self-heal and tablet and staff combination makes it considerably easier to survive. Now let's start talking about the boss mechanics. Handkiter basically stuns on small AoE which damages them per second and stacks couple of those AoE skills on top of each other and now moves to an empty area and continue doing this until the fight ends. For this to work you need to put tank and kiter far from each other, hence tank and kiter stuns on opposite sides of the platform. Because Deimos has an AoE skill throws people off the platform and then there are black AoEs to manage and this kind of stuff you don't want to reach your kiter because as long as your kiter and tank is alive you can somehow restore the mistakes of this fight and successfully kill the boss. The AoE's kiter is tanking will gradually hit harder because they will be putting as much AoE as they can on top of each other before they move. For this recording, Runa puts 5 on top of each other and moves. As long as you survive, put as many as you want. If you want to put 3 and move, do that. But you have to manage the space that is left for you. Of course, there is a skill called Mind Crush Demos Cast and people need to stay inside the dome in the middle or else it downs players. Kiter cannot move from where they are and it cannot go to the dome, so they have to survive this. Herald uses staff and sword shield combination on weapon slots, but you'll see different playstyles from different heralds. Runo here on this video doesn't swap weapons, plays with only staff and uses weapon skill number 2 and 4 to heal herself and dodges mind crush with weapon skill 3. On the other hand, Gab, one of our other kiters, blocks mind crush with shield and then switches to staff, uses weapon skill 2-4 to heal himself and keeps swapping and uses tablet to heal himself. Both builds keep utility skill number 6 and your ultimate skill active at all times on this legend and this should keep you alive if nothing goes wrong. 
Now, since Runa blocks Mind Crush with Stuff Tree, if you use that skill mistakenly and it's on cooldown, you'll have to be extra careful until the debuff from Mind Crush fades. This debuff, as you can see, weakens you and increases your damage taken. You can overheal this damage because hand kiter revenants have good amount of regeneration. But still be careful, maybe decrease the amount of AoEs you stack until the debuff fades. As you watch, you'll see Runo healing herself mainly with her weapon skills and she uses utility heal as a backup when they must cast a skill or you can also use it when you make mistakes as well. This heal skill will increase your healing the first time you activate it. You keep this skill active and the skill will turn all the incoming damage to healing the second time you press it. So if you are having a hard time, you can use the skill a second time as a backup heal. And then you can keep it active after cooldown is ready again. For our guild's positioning, we do it like this. This is the way we put markers and divide the platform. As you can see, while Kiter moves between using the yellow route here, so even if blacks fail, Kiter will be safe from them. If blacks fail, Kiter runs as far as possible to leave some space for people who are running from the black area. But if you're a DPS running from the blacks, do not move further from the Kiter, so you won't steal the hand kiting mechanic from them, because hands focus the furthest player from Deimos, and you'll kill yourself. <laughs> Another small note, the tears on the ground you know from the original mechanics will hurt your hand kiter. So getting them as soon as they spawn will also help your kiter. Kiters can take tears too, that are close to them. With enough regeneration, tears won't be much of a problem. When Deimos phases at 10% platform changes, but you will still kite until boss dies. When Deimos hits the platform, that is, when he knocks players back, you can use your weapon skill 3, staff skill 3, to block it. But also, if you stand a little bit closer to the middle of the platform, you can prevent getting thrown out of the platform, just in case you can't block it on time. So, this is all there is to kiting. This video is recorded by Runo with Harold Revenant and thank you Runo for the video. These kind of mechanics, to be honest, will stress you out because you die, team dies. It's a lot of pressure. Everyone goes on learning curve for these mechanics, so take my advice and try and have fun on your next turn trying this mechanic. See you fellow gamers on the next video.